Good day and welcome to today's session on Why Linux on Power. Hopefully you joined us for the previous session on understanding the values of Linux to the enterprise. But if not, you can always go back, listen to that later, look at the slides, uh, and hopefully today we will take you through some of the key thought processes associated with selecting or determining whether to run Linux on power. Today's session, during the session, you will be able to use the green Q&A box in the lower left-hand corner to type out questions, and I will get to answering those as soon as I can uh, at an appropriate time. So feel free to ask questions. We'll get those, get those sent back to you, get them, get them answered. Uh, this is something you should uh, freely do, as I will tell you, it is a key part of of what I do as Chief Engineer for Linux on Power. Yes, I am Jeff Scheel. I've been working with IBM for longer than I care to admit most days, probably uh, 25 years or in that time frame. Uh, and as somebody who works out of Rochester, Minnesota, and who started in OS 400 uh, and the AS 400 environment, it's always my pleasure to talk to uh, folks that are a part of that environment today, our IBM I crowd and the common group in particular. So before we get going, I would like to uh, make you aware of a couple additional things here on the front slide. Of course, my email address is there. If you're old school like me, if you do have a question or a follow-up thing you think of later, please feel free to reach out via email. I always tell clients, customers, and partners that I get to their emails before I get to my colleagues' emails. So go ahead, bury me an email, and I'll just ignore my colleagues. Uh, and that'll, uh, that'll help me uh, stay focused on the important things. There are three other badges there underneath my um, picture. One is to Developer Works. Uh, that's a, there's a hot link out to Developer Works. If you're not familiar with the Linux on Power community in Developer Works, I encourage you to start there for any of your questions, any of your searches for information about Linux on Power. We keep uh, a very active wiki environment of resources, uh, where to get more information. We have a forum for discussions, and uh, we blog about new thoughts, new events, new ideas, all going on out there. The red G plus badge is a link to our Google Plus community, the Power Linux community inside of Google Plus. Again, interesting information there. If you're a part of Google Plus, uh, that, that would, uh, I'd encourage you to reach out there. I can tell you I will be posting these slides out in Google Plus or a link to them. Actually, they'll probably be in Drive, but I'll link to them from Google Plus. And we'll also try to make them available for you uh, off of the event uh, website as well. So. You can use these slides as you're considering your decision and, and to share with colleagues. And finally, the third badge, of course, is a Twitter badge. There is an IBM Power Linux Twitter feed where we tend to send out snippets of things going on inside of Power, or most specifically, things going on as a part of Linux on Power. So if you're perhaps more social than I and Twitter is your thing, don't be afraid to uh, follow us out on Twitter. Again, I am the Chief Engineer for Linux on Power, have been in this role for 15 years, and I'm excited about today's discussion of why Linux on Power. As I've thought through, discussed this topic with many customers, uh, especially the last five to six years, I have broken the thinking down into base, three basic steps, and we'll spend our time working through this. The first step is why Linux? Arguably, that was the uh, majority of the content of our previous session on the value of Linux to the enterprise. We'll, we'll start there very quickly. Work then into why would I do Linux with IBM? A lot of people are doing Linux in the industry. What's the value to working with IBM? And we'll spend the majority of our time really on the third section. Once you decide you're doing Linux, once you decide you want to do it with IBM, what are the benefits of doing it on power? So those are the three sections. Let's start with why Linux. 
when I talk to people today, the Linux decision really comes down to five basic benefits that Linux provides to the enterprise. Today, the Linux distribution, that ISO, that DVD, that media, comes bundled with a wealth of applications. Depending upon which Linux vendor you select, you get anywhere from upwards of about 12,000 packages to over 50,000 packages by the time one gets done looking at what's available in Ubuntu's ecosystem. So lots of things are there. There's programming languages. There's applications like web servers, databases. Uh, and there's new technologies being added to it all the time, the Hadoop file systems, Docker, all of the emerging technologies. So the first one is more and more things come to customers by buying the Linux distribution. It's almost the new version of the integrated operating system, kind of like our IBM I heritage. It's there, it's bundled, it's tested, it's brought to market at the same time, and then refreshed all together. So that's the first one. Second reason people are going to Linux is students are studying Linux these days. That means Linux skills and resources out of the university, out of industry, are readily available. Third reason, key technologies in software, whether it's KVM, the kernel virtualization management, open source virtualization, or cloud open stack on KVM, and many emerging applications, Hadoop, Redis, MongoDB, Docker, Node.js, V8, all of those are new pieces of software that have come to market that are starting to make a difference to the next generation of applications in the enterprise. The fourth reason is Linux has now demonstrated, sort of beyond a reasonable doubt, that it's reliable, scalable, secure. It has been fully embraced by the enterprise. And finally, perhaps the most exciting thing, but somewhat undervalued and appreciated, is because Linux is open source, we can change the support model in our enterprise. I actually meet with customers that build Linux organizations and value the fact they can get to the source, they can make fixes, they can support themselves much more than they ever have done on any of the previous Unix or certainly proprietary operating systems that exist today. And they can even get creative and extend it, change it, modify it themselves as well. Very, very important. And it, it also goes to the point of in this ecosystem, if I have a problem, Google is my friend. I can oftentimes find people through a simple Google search or whatever your search engine of choice is that get you to other folks that have had similar problems in this environment, thus enabling really a whole ecosystem of self-support. So that's, that's the simplest summary of why people are adopting Linux. I made an argument in the value of Linux to the enterprise uh, session right at the end that it's also about commonality. It's about saving the enterprise money. It's about taking the definition of platform as is shown along the bottom of this slide from being the whole software stack at the application at the top. And I use the analogy of my first word processor, Ami Pro, running on Windows sort of pre-98, whatever it was. It might have just been Windows 3 something or another. Running on Windows, running on a PC, no hypervisor. Uh, to the desktop publishing that we had inside of the business when I joined IBM, Bookmaster on a mainframe in a VM on a on, you know on a System 370 or whatever the vintage of System Z was that it was. So it's come from that day to an environment today where platform is quickly becoming just the enterprise architecture hardware, the processor and its commonality above it. It's KVM as the virtualization. It's Linux as the operating system. It is an application environment, uh, whether it's SAP, whether it's DB2, whether it's WAF, 
that runs across all of those platforms, and we're now seeing many new applications written specifically for Linux. And so this commonality means once you get a software stack like this as an enterprise, I can train my people to the application, to the Linux operating system, SLES 11 SP3, uh, running KVM on the hardware, and then pick my hardware platform as the one that best meets my needs, the needs of my workload, and the needs of my environment. So this commonality means fewer differences, fewer education, fewer learning experiences, simplified enterprise environments, and that is also at the heart. It's not just what's in the Linux operating system. It's in how the enterprise is changing, maturing, and moving forward. And so by saving expense, that allows you as an enterprise to take that money and apply it to what you do best in your environment and solve the real problems instead of infrastructure sorts of needs. So once that happens, once people start to understand that, and as I think at this from an IBM perspective, this means folks start to change their buying habits in the marketplace. So what we knew from the Unix market days uh, was that we led with things like benchmarks. It was about the benchmarks. My spec JBB is better than your spec JBB. Then it was about my system. The second priority was my system is better than yours because I can do flatter NUMA, larger SMPs, whatever it is. It was about differentiation. And finally, we'd want you to do a three to five year TCO study to prove that the benchmarks, the differentiation could ultimately save you money because it was not so easy to compare this system to that system. You really had to look at the whole impact on the enterprise. Now. The Linux market priorities, as I talk to customers, as I talk to people in this space, it really is almost, uh, if you're a business person, a commodity-based market. It begins with price. It doesn't end with price. It starts with price, and it tends to be a TCA, a total cost of acquisition environment. What does this solution cost me day one? Then people say perhaps the most important part of this change, can you plug into my infrastructure? Remember the previous slide, it was about commonality. It was about my software stack is the same across all platforms. Well, that idea has been filtered all the way down to the purchasing decision. Do you have my Linux version? Can you run KVM? Are you using OpenStack? Do you support MongoDB? What are your Docker plans type discussion? And finally then, enterprises and customers are then concerned about performance. And unlike benchmarks in the Unix days where I could do 15 type benchmarks and you could look at all of them, Performance means something different to every customer in every environment. This is the quick try and buy of their reference architecture. I have my benchmarks. I run on the platform. Here's, um, here's how you get your hardware into my platform environment. So customers, as they've made this change to take cost out of their enterprise, have also changed how their buying habits uh, or their process for buying and Linux and specifically Linux on power, now has to uh, change how we think about that. And the key real piece of this from a technologist perspective is can I give customers value add in this new environment on the right while still being, as number two in the green shows, as standardized as possible. And so that's it's part of this challenge that I grapple with. But you as enterprises have laid out this is the way we're going to be and behave. And so this is the challenge. And hopefully by the time we get done with today, this is the sort of question that we answer. Why Linux on power? You'll see we've addressed the standardizations and we've provided value add by the time we get to the end of this presentation. That is at the heart of where I want to take you today. So let's go to the next step. 
Why Linux? I think we've talked about those changes. Why Linux with IBM? Well, this is a little bit of an old slide, and if any of you have ever heard me present, you may have seen me use this slide. You may have heard me talk about this slide. But the net-net of why Linux with IBM is that Linux inside of IBM has perhaps been done the most correct way one could actually embrace this open source ecosystem and environment. You see, IBM is not a consumer of open source technology. We're a contributor, an innovator. We're somebody that's driving Linux and making it better. There have been numerous studies by the Linux Foundation over the years. This particular one on the right-hand side of the chart is looking at contributions to Linux over the seven-year period from 2005 to 2012 and basically ranks the people contributing. What you see there and what has historically been shown is that IBM is one of the top contributors. Red Hat's up there. SUSE is up there. Intel's up there, but what is key about the differences between us and the other people at the top is really the idea that we deliver the most complete solution in this space. HP's way down the list. Dell doesn't even make the list. It clearly is an environment where IBM as a solution provider has differentiated ourselves significantly here. We're out contributing. We're out making communities better. We're participating in the Linux Foundation and, and all of the ecosystem sorts of environments. We're participating in key projects. And all of this changes. But at the heart, we're out working with the community or actually communities, plural. The group inside of IBM, you probably heard us mention, IBM's Linux Technology Center. It's the group that I'm a part of. Chief Engineer for Linux on Power. I have colleagues that work on Linux for System Z as a part of this technolo Linux Technology Center. And up until very recently, we also had people focused on System X, and going forward, we still continue to have people focused on Linux independent of the platforms. It's the mission of our organization to contribute to the community, to make sure that the operating systems get treated uh, as a tier one operating system, both inside IBM, outside of IBM, whether it's with ISVs, whether it's with communities, uh, with projects, it's to make Linux as, as good as we can. And quite honestly, then, this part, very much like what I'm doing, working with customers, explaining concepts, doing education, helping solve problems with Linux, is really at the heart as well of everything the Linux Technology Center does. As I've already foreshadowed in the previous slide, that's just a part of what we do. We have multiple hardware platforms. We, of course, have system software that have fully embraced the Linux environment, a very wide range and robust software group applications. You put Linux support on top of that. You sell global services and global financing when closing a deal. You had storage underneath. You can't get a better end-to-end -end solution for Linux from anybody in the marketplace. That's the value of Linux with IBM. I tend to tell a story when talking about this to help you understand the value of having all of that and having deep technical skills underneath it. And that story is, but I have a 17-year-old son that when he got involved in Linux about four years ago, I was his support structure. Now, we've talked about Linux being extensible, supportable, self-supportable. When he got started, I had to teach him how to do his own Linux support. He'd come and say, hey, Dad, I'm having trouble doing such and such. 
how do I fix that, Dad? And I'd say, well, have you tried Google? And so he'd go off and Google something. He'd say, oh, yeah, Dad, you know, I found out if I change this configuration file, I could do blah, 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 whatever it was. Got to the point where he quit asking that question. He was now self-supportable. But if anybody remembers the Ubuntu, uh, about the 12.04 release, they changed their desktop model from a GNOME-based environment to their Unity uh, integrated uh, sort of Windows environment, very much uh, similar to what uh, the docking and the such occurs with uh, with Mac OS and common unified Windows sort of scheme. Um, and so he shows up one day, he'd been playing with Unity, and he says, Dad, do you know anybody working on Unity development? And that was an eye-opening moment. Now the questions were no longer the self-support these were deep technical questions, and it's the nature of that question that really is at the heart of why doing Linux with IBM and why the technical aspects of the Linux Technology Center matter. Because when you as an enterprise are running your mission-critical applications and you have an issue, heaven forbid it's something like data integrity or a, you know, a, a key system outage, whatever it is, because we have people out doing deep technical work, you can pick up the phone, call 1-800-IBM-LOVES-YOU or whatever that number is, and get to the people that wrote that code, usually in a Linux space, and have us help you. It's not just that we're consuming it such that, you know, the old Windows model will send you back to Microsoft because it's our hardware but not our OS. In this case, it may not be completely ROS, but we are technical experts in that space. Rest assured, if you stump us, we'll work with Red Hat, SUSE, or Canonical behind, not send you back and forth, or should you choose to have your software support from one of those vendors and you stump them, we'll help them. So really doing Linux with IBM is about having the most comprehensive, wide-range, efficient, best support team and best solution you could ever have for Linux. So that's how I wrap up the why do Linux with IBM. Time to take on the meat of the discussion. We've been slowly peeling this onion. Time to go to the heart and really get after why Linux on power. People usually think of Linux as an x86 operating system. People also think of AIX as being power. And what I tell people when they start with the first level answer to the why Linux on power is, let's start with what you know about Linux. Well, it's a robust, it's a unique, it's extensible, everything on the right-hand side. of It's all the goodness around Linux. So you pick Linux, all right? We're going to do Linux. Great. Now, what do we know about power? Great virtualization capabilities, great performance, always trying to work towards cost savings in these environments, especially in the Linux space, great reliability, great availability, all of the aspects we think about generally around I and AIX are really about power systems, minus some some OS details there. I'm, I'm not going to uh, belittle the OS features, but usually the things people associate with power systems are really more about the hardware and less about the operating system. And so the first answer for why Linux on power is you want to combine everything you're going to get with Linux and put it on and take an advantage of and exploit all of the benefits of the Power Platform. That's the first level to this answer. Now, most of you out there are IBM I customers. Can sometimes have an enterprise that's rather small. Perhaps you're from a big environment. You're happy with you're happy with your iOS. Why do Why do you care as an audience? about Linux. Well, 
you're likely going to get to Linux one of two ways. You're going to get there through what I like to call indirect use, meaning you didn't really pick Linux, you got it, or the direct use. You made an explicit decision, I'm going Linux. And most of what we've done is talk about the first one. Let me start with, or sorry, most of what we've done is talk about the second one. Let's start with the first one. How might you get to Linux in a rather indirect fashion? If you recall the April announce where we launched Power 8, you probably saw a slide very much like this one where we talked about our analytics solutions, we talked about our mobile solutions, we talked about our cloud solutions. The only thing was when we did it, we didn't stick the little Linux logo on there. I did that for effect. I wanted you to understand that there are solutions that are starting to come to market, and there are more and more of them all the time that we will see as going to highlight some of them more recent than this, but there are solutions that will be Linux only. They came to market as Linux only solutions. Right about the center, a little bit near the top, Hadoop based solutions, big data solutions. Either Hadoop through IBM Big Insights or could be through the data in motion streams, InfoSphere Streams product. Those big data solutions are Linux-only solutions. Not available on IBM i, not available on AIX. If you want to run Hadoop and do unstructured data analytics, Linux is where you will do that. Those solutions are Linux-based. You won't hear us talk about them as Linux. You'll hear us talk about them as Hadoop or big data solutions. That's the first one. Second one, down in mobile. Remember the WorkLite product? Turns out WorkLite is available in a lot of different environments. It's an application where the, the uh, software group team has done a great job of making available in multiple environments. Now, why might I highlight that one as a Linux solution? Now, you could pick your operating system and run it there. It turns out in this case it gives me a chance to talk about PVUs, the processor uh, value units that are used to license our software. Linux on power PVUs, we've made a business decision to hold, to start and hold those at 70 PVUs. If you're familiar with our pricing structure, things usually begin about that environment and can grow to 110, 120 or higher. What we've done with Linux on Power says no matter where you run Linux on Power, whether it's a scale-out server at the bottom end of the line or a scale-up enterprise server top end of the line, 70 PVUs for a, for a Linux on Power license for the software group products that are priced by PVU. WorkLite as an example. So if I'm going to run WorkLite, I encourage people make an economical choice here. Let's use Linux on Power as an economical way to do that. And final place that Linux is making a huge difference, in fact, if you attended the uh, value of Linux to the enterprise session, we talked about clouds. Linux is driving a whole new set of open source based cloud solutions. This is OpenStack on top of KVM, a highly lightweight, quick deploy, build it, use it, tear it down, redefine it, move it, free it sort of environment common to most x86 scale-out clouds in the environment. So on top of that are some of our key software based upon OpenStack, such as PowerVC is a Linux-based solution, as well as a lot of the OpenStack components in our cloud management software. The actual management pieces are cloud-based. Yes, we can manage any of the various OSs in the compute environment, but the management software in this environment runs on Linux. This open source set of software, very extensive. Linux is the perfect way to bring it onto the Power Platform. 
because Linux is Linux, the libraries are the same, the technologies are the same. That is how we will benefit the enterprise. So while you may not have a direct need for Linux, you might indirectly get there through a solution. You and your enterprise may be looking to deploy to solve a problem, and that may have Linux underneath. So there is an indirect route. And this is a trend, as this slide, the next slide shows. The next great Linux on Power application that we've been talking about and doing early uh, looks at, there's sort of a beta process, a uh, beta program going on right now with a few select customers is SAP HANA. HANA is a Linux workload, x86 Linux workload highly dependent upon open source software. The on-ramp for HANA onto the Power Platform will be Linux. Not yet fully available to GA. I don't have the details to talk about when that is, but the key part is this is a trend. Hadoop, streams, cloud, now HANA, these are the next generation of workloads, either based on open source or comprised of large pieces of open source software. This is where Linux is where the new workloads are coming to the platform. So why would people do Linux on power? Well, we started with the attributes of the system. We talked about how I customers might get there through one or two routes. We've just completed the indirect use. You're looking for a solution. You get Linux as a part of the solution. Now let's take on the direct use. Direct use is it's about commonality, and it's about how people are standardizing their enterprises around Linux and a Linux-based stack. This is right where we started the why Linux discussion. So people who say, yes, that's my enterprise, they are going to adopt Linux because it saves them money. And as the slogan says, differentiation kills, right? It's all about standardization. Differentiation means expense. Standardization means cost savings and simplification. The best example of that goes back to the cloud architecture discussion. Remember how I mentioned scale out clouds with OpenStack and KVM, common deployment uh, of a scale out world, common solution. I argue it's a de facto standard for deployment architectures. That means when we developed an KVM on power and released our product, Power KVM, we got the benefits of being able to plug into arguably a yet sort of rarely talked about heterogeneous cloud. Most people think of heterogeneous clouds as on-prem and off-site sorts of clouds, uh, you know, that hybrid cloud. Heterogeneous in this case means imagine an x86-based cloud infrastructure in OpenStack that understands how to speak libvirt and a common set of APIs and that is managed by a common set of tools like Chef and Puppet and others, I should be able to build a power system that supports those APIs using the existing pieces of open source software and take that power node and plug it into the infrastructure and immediately have it manageable, recognized, and supportable in this environment. And all of this interoperability, all of these APIs, all of this open deployment architecture comes from using open source. And that is precisely the value of open source of Linux and the KVM environment in a cloud environment. Very, very common architecture. In fact, perhaps you recently heard about the customer reference and the announce around a service provider out of France, OVH. They did just this. They had an existing 
x86 based infrastructure on OpenStack and KVM. They had no power in their system. They put the components that they built themselves. They didn't even start with our version of KVM. They took their own components. They put it on a power system. They built it. They plugged it into their architecture, and they got the benefits of the platform just by plugging it into their infrastructure. And now they have power-based offerings in their service provider environment. So that is by far uh, the best example of how open source enables this open deployment architecture. But enabling today's architecture isn't the long-range strategy. The long-range strategy is about the next generation of problems. In fact, as we say here, we're building a software strategy that is about skating to where the puck is going, right? Said I was from Minnesota. Let's pick a hockey analogy. Could be like youth sports, and pick, let's pick the opposite one. Remember youth soccer or youth basketball with the sort of swarm defense and offense where they all followed the ball around? We don't want to chase the ball in this software world. We want to go to where the ball is going to be. We want to get open in the open spot on the field or on the floor such that a pass can be made there and we can meet the ball. And so we want to skate to where the puck is going to come back to the ice analogy. And that is, yes, based on open source infrastructure at the bottom. KVM OpenStack. Yes, that embraces the Linux that our partners know, but it's really about the next generation of software packages that are coming to market. NGINX, Neo4j, Node.js, Cassandra, MongoDB, and it wouldn't be a cool presentation if I didn't use the phrase Docker. Things like that are the next generation of technologies that are going on today in the open source software world. And we are out working in those communities, and Docker is the best example of it today. Yes, Docker has technology previews available today from our Linux vendors. Yes, there's a company starting to support this in enterprise version, but IBM's working both with that company and with the communities underneath and working with that company to get power enabled in this environment such that as you, as enterprises, wish to take advantage of this technology, you can try power as you start to do your development and before you get to your production deployment of the end solution. And so that is why we want to skate to where the puck is going. And our biggest set of partners here is really the Open Power Foundation helping us drive this as well. Common ecosystem between IBM Power and Open Power when it comes to software. And the foundation has embraced open source, and we're all working towards these applications. And this sets us up to help you solve the next set of problems in your enterprise. And they will be Linux solutions. So I mentioned Open Power. They actually are the key to our hardware strategy. So not only is open source good, I, you know, I've been saying that implicitly all the way through this, but open power is about saying open is good when it comes to hardware. Collaboration in the open power foundation is occurring on so many levels. What you see here is a list that's probably short of uh, where we are today. It says 62 members and growing. It began with IBM, Google, NVIDIA, Mellanox, and Tyann, and now has 62 members collaborating in a variety of areas. It begins at the heart on chip and system on a chip sorts of issues. It extends through I.O. and accelerators and quickly gets out to software, to research, to academic initiatives. Open power is about all of that based on power hardware architecture. Uh, and thus, when I talk about our hardware strategy, it really is open is good from a power perspective.
let's refresh then. We've got a software strategy. We've got a hardware strategy. We've got a good hardware platform. All right, we're going to pick Linux. What Linux runs on power systems? I've laid it out here. There's three different partnerships that IBM's involved in. We treat them equitably to the best of our ability. We've got a relationship with Red Hat. They have their RHEL product, their enterprise product, and their open source Fedora community uh, distribution that, that really feeds RHEL. We support RHEL, and Fedora supports power. Same with SUSE. SLES is their enterprise product. OpenSUSE is their community distribution. We support SLES. We work very closely with SUSE on, uh, on creating that, bringing that to market. OpenSUSE supports power. Uh, we're all out there collaborating together. Ubuntu is the newest distribution on power from Canonical, the vendor. So you might hear me use Canonical. Uh, and Ubuntu interchangeably, but Ubuntu is the newest distribution. Ubuntu, as one of the Open Power Foundation uh, members, or Canonical as one of the Open Power Foundation members, sorry. See, I told you I'd get confused. Uh, has helped us, along with some of the other folks, to start a new thought in the power platform world, and that is the idea of using little Indian capabilities of the processor to simplify application portability, data interoperability, data sharing, uh, those sorts of aspects. And so Ubuntu is really leading our little Indian charge. Uh, SUSE has brought their little Indian product to market with SLES 12. And RHEL isn't far behind as they're already starting to talk about their plans. Red Hat has started to talk about their plans associated uh, with RHEL to get to little Indian as well in a 7.1 time frame. So, so Lots of options from an operating system perspective if you're going to do it on power. In fact, when you select your Linux, as we thought of uh, and discussed in the earlier session on the, the value of Linux to the enterprise, I fully expect to plug into your Linux. So you can say, as an enterprise, I want to standardize on SLES. Please tell me, do you have support for SLES 11? And we go down to the middle column right there about the middle and say, yeah, we have SLES 11, and it's supported on this hardware with this set of capabilities. Uh, and that is really our vision. You're going to pick your Linux distribution. We want to have it enabled, and we're working to build an ecosystem of software that supports all of these folks uh, around the outside. Now, it goes without saying, the box at the top is worth highlighting. Um, though that this is the same in the case we were just talking about SLES 11 on power as it is on your x86. This is that commonality we were talking about. It's built from the same source. That means the kernel version is the same. The compiler that was used to build it is at the same level. The libraries are the same. They're built at the same level. Same file system, same device drivers if I'm dealing with the same adapter. Commonality is is key here. Now, it's the same in the sense that it started with the same source. The ISO, the media, the image does have to differ, though. It has to be a power binary. You don't want power either emulating x86 or just trying to run them flat out, which wouldn't work natively. You want the native binaries for these environments. So when we talk about it being built from the same source and we talk about Linux being Linux, that doesn't mean we're trying to run the Intel instruction set on power. Yeah, you have to have the power binary, but it is the same SLES 11 at the package level, version level, because it started from the same source as I was describing. So that's the key thing. Second key is it's delivered on the same schedule. So when SUSE shipped SLES 12, they supported power at the same time they supported x86, supported on the same schedule. and or sorry, delivered on the same schedule, supported in the same way. You can get support from them, being the vendor, or you can get support from IBM. Okay, Key parts of Linux on power. Why would you do it? Because we have your distribution. How would you do it as a part of doing it? Well, a couple different ways. You may not be a scale-out kind of person. You may be somebody who values our enterprise systems. If 
you value our enterprise systems, we have something called our Integrated Facilities for Linux. My apologies for not spelling that out on this slide, but that's what IFL stands for. It's a technique, uh, uh, a technology that came from our System Z colleagues. We will license you bundles of four cores of hardware and give you the enterprise power VM license on top of those cores to be able to run Linux uh, and license a certain about or activate a certain amount of memory associated with it. I think it's 32 gig. I'd have to go check it recently. But we'll, we'll, we'll activate the cores, the memory, give you the software license for a very competitive price so that you can use Linux on your power system to take advantage of, if you're going to use IBM software products, the 70 PVUs, right? So that is a capability and a way to do Linux at the high end to keep it as price competitive as we can against the existing marketplace, which oftentimes doesn't have systems of this size. So. Don't forget about integrated facilities for Linux if you either want to play, yes, try and buy would work in this case, uh, or deploy, do development, etc. cetera. Uh, IFLs are a key part of, of Linux solutions on our enterprise servers. If you go to the opposite end of the portfolio, then the cost-sensitive side of IFLs on the scale outside is the Linux only boxes or the L boxes as we call them. The 812L, the 822L, and the 824L. You likely are familiar with the non-L models. There are, as, as this chart points out, the equivalent L models that are priced solely for Linux. Now, these servers, the 812 and the 822, uh, are worth talking about. The 824 is a little special. I'll come back to it. But the the one and two socket 2U servers here will run either PowerVM, including BIOS, uh, or non-virtualized, basically whole system image, single LPAR sort of mode on PowerVM, or they will do the new open virtualization with KVM. Could be Power KVM, uh, IBM's product that we'll bundle and put on the hardware for you, or you could use the KVM capabilities bundled into SLES 12 or Ubuntu 14.10. So lots of options are available to you on those two servers. In fact, it's entirely possible if you're in a large enterprise that those are the very sets of servers that your x86 colleagues are building, deploying, and using inside of your enterprise, because that's what they recognize. The 824L is a little bit unique in that it is a brand new offering that has just come to market focused on uh, GPU acceleration. So that particular box doesn't run from uh, when it comes from IBM PowerVM or KVM. It actually runs on the firmware that KVM runs on. So it runs Ubuntu on that firmware and is being used to build and deploy GPU-based solutions around our NVIDIA relationship for analytics in the environment. Could be HPC-type analytics, could be enterprise analytics, uh, but that is our GPU-based box and solution at this time. So you can do Linux in a scale-out world, as your x86 colleagues and the rest of the market are doing it, or you can integrate Linux on power right into your infrastructure using IFLs. And it probably goes without saying if you don't have IFLs on the scale-out systems, but you can still run an 822 server, put Linux in a VM on those servers, and still leverage everything the power box can do for you, but with the benefits of Linux as an operating system environment. Okay, so let's wrap up. I've tried to take you through the thought processes. Why Linux? Why Linux on power? Or why Linux? Why Linux with IBM? And why Linux on power? Why Linux? 
it is about cost. It's not about cost in the sense of free beer. It's free as in free beer. You oftentimes hear that associated with Linux, and it's not that kind of cost. It's about cost out of reduction of expense through commonality. It's about changing how a data center behaves with respect to openness, support, and ultimately, it's about enabling the next generation of applications, right? Hannah is a great enterprise product example, but there are loads of next generation open source software that enterprises are adopting as well that we've also talked about. Docker, MongoDB, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Redis. That is the enterprise, or that is the value of Linux to the enterprise. Take the cost out, set you up for the future for technology. Linux on power, when one starts thinking about how to do that, really can be simplified down to it's an on-ramp. For customers that are familiar with open source, I can give you the same open source set of capabilities on a power system right down to virtualization and KVM. Once you get onto the platform, then you can exploit the capabilities of what the platform can do for you. Our performance, our robustness, our flexibility, our virtualization, either open through KVM or through our outstanding product, PowerVM, right? Great capabilities in this world. You can interoperate. You can, you can build it in such a way that it interoperates with your I environment, your AIX environment, or it could simply be standalone. Lots of ways to think about solving the problems you may be encountering. The final piece of this is, so I'm an I customer. So what? How do I get there? Well, you may get there indirectly, or you may decide to adopt for direct reasons. The indirect ways could be that solution. Could be you want HANA. Could be you want to do Hadoop. Could be you want to, want to leverage GPUs for a set of analytics in your environment. That's those indirect sorts of solutions are going to force you to a Linux world. Could also be that you as a corporation have made a direction to go to Linux. If you're in an enterprise, it's entirely possible your enterprise has embraced it, but the power folks have said not ready to go there yet. So there's, there's a lot of different directions going on inside of the enterprise relative to direct use of Linux. If you're an enterprise, where power has been fighting the Linux team, here's your olive branch sort of scenario. Hey, we do Linux too. Hey, have you seen KVM? I can give you an environment, put it on the system, allows you to run that SLES 11 that you want where you can get benefits. Why don't you do some compiles over here? Why don't you, why don't you try running your, your Hadoop environment over here? A lot of different things happen when enterprises start to leverage this commonality. And oftentimes they'll make the directive, and it's not always something that the power side of the business wants to hear. So, you know, think about Linux as an on-ramp. Think about Linux in the sense of uh, where the technologies are going in the software world. And reach out to your colleagues in the x86 side of your enterprise and encourage them to collaborate with you on this. So, So that's the... Why power Linux? That's the story. That's the scenario. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have questions, you've asked them on the left-hand side. I'm going to do my best to get out there, get them answered, uh, get you answers. If there's something we need to follow up with, uh, please feel free to reach out to the uh, email address at the front here. Please look for the slides. It will be posted here or out in Google+, because there's always good information uh, in there, links to things that are, that are laid out. And if you didn't get a chance to hear the value of Linux uh, to the enterprise session, feel free to go find that, listen to that, and uh, follow up as needed as well there. So thank you very much for your time. Hope you found this uh, 
very helpful. And uh, good luck with uh, exploiting Linux on power systems, and let me know how I can help you.